Hey everybody, thank you for joining and welcome to episode 16 of FOBO. I'm your friendly neighborhood product owner, Tom Ald. In today's episode, we continue our journey of demystifying Agile by diving headfirst into the role that is mentioned in exactly zero of the foundational documents of Agile, the Agile coach. Where did this role come from? What are they supposed to do? How did so many of them come from out of thin air? And more importantly, how do you search for and find a great Agile coach for your organization? I have five must-ask questions for you and your next Agile coach interview. So grab your coffee, tea, or your favorite adult beverage, and let's focus on staying relevant at work. coach is someone who tells you what you don't want to hear, who has you see what you don't want to see, so that you can be who you always know you could be. That is a quote from Tom Landry. If you don't know, Tom Landry is a legendary coach in the sports world, but don't take it from me. Let's hear it from one of his most accomplished players, Emmett Smith. Coach Landry was not only a great coach, but also a mentor and a father figure to many of us. He had a profound impact on my life, teaching me the value of hard work, discipline, and integrity. His teachings extended beyond the game and shaped me as a person. That's Emmett Smith, Hall of Fame running back. Now back to our focus on the Agile coaching role. Agile coach is a relatively new term and role, and it's fraught with misinformation and misunderstanding. It's a role that went from a dozen people that could properly do it five years ago to thousands of people performing this role now. So let's baseline the role. The Agile coach is an Agile expert in theory and in practice, an expert at one or more Agile frameworks, be it Scrum, Kanban, Lean, DevOps, you name it. An expert at applying the framework in multiple contexts at different companies with different products and different team settings. An expert that has real-world experience in creating a product or service using the agility mindset and an agile framework. They're an expert at building high-performing teams. They're an expert at organizational design. They're an expert at finding value and reducing waste. And they're also an expert that can make a connection and an impact at any level of the organization from the newest person hired to the C-suite, the Agile coach can be successful. This is not a role you can take training for. Sure, training is a fantastic starting point, but you need to combine the training with real-world application where this future coach was personally accountable for the results. This is where coaches are lacking. Their heart is in the right place, but the lack of personal experience makes it impossible for the coach to have a true understanding of what the person they're trying to help with is going through. All training and no experience, or all hat and no cattle, as one of my colleagues from Texas added. Agile coaches create value because they can bring all of their knowledge and tools to any organization and find the most valuable opportunities to go after. A few examples. Too many handoffs in a process while building a product that leads to missed deadlines? The Agile coach idea, let's pilot a team that has all the skills to build the product from start to finish. You think your product is too specialized to do that? I would love to learn more, but I do know that it works at Toyota and their cars are pretty complicated and there's many other examples we could cite. Are your teams overworked and underperforming? Great, let's visualize every piece of work that this team is accountable for and prioritize them by value 1 to 10, 10 being the most valuable. Anything with a score of 5 and below, that stopped immediately until further notice. Is the product launched 30 days from now, but the marketing team is just hearing about this? Let's get the VPs in a room and let's see how we can embed a marketing expert into the product team for the next few weeks so we can get them up to speed on the product and they can start designing a product rollout strategy that is immediately shared with the team for feedback and it is then taken to the larger organization for wider feedback and acceptance. 
Agile coaches have an experience, a story, or an example for every situation because they've been doing it for so long. The director of recruiting for a global consulting organization asked me how they can improve their hiring process for Agile coaches. Our clients need this kind of role. They need our help, she said. But 80% of our consultants are not working out in this role. It's hurting our credibility with clients. So we talked about this and we came up with the top five questions that I pose to ask for every prospective Agile coach. Number one, some variation of this question. Why is agility important to you? Why do you believe in this way of work? Why do you believe in agility? Every Agilist, somebody who believes in agility, has a personal story. Usually the story is based on a bad experience that scarred them. My story played out in a crowded elevator. The senior vice president of finance told me how they used the new SAP implementation that made the finance team's life so much worse. We used to close the books every month with two clicks in two hours, he said. This new and improved system took us 14 clicks in 48 hours. Did I mention I was still holding the award for IT project of the year when he mentioned this to me? Yeah, it didn't feel good. That was what first inspired me to find a different way to work, a way that put the customer first. Question number two, where do you use agility personally? People that really believe in agility use it in multiple places in their work and life. In 2014, after dozens of people told me that Scrum is just for software, I bought a house and I flipped it using Scrum. I had five fully dedicated cross-functional building contractors and six months later had sold our first flip for a 37% profit. We've done 14 more houses since. Number three, tell me about the time you played an agile role on a team. Coaches must have time in position. In other words, they have had to be a scrum master, a product owner, lean practitioner, developer, and not just a technical developer, somebody building a product. What did you do? What did you learn? And how did you improve? Nothing teaches a future coach better than real world experience. When coaching, this will help you relate to the team members so much better. And if you don't have it, I would advise you to maybe hold off on coaching for right now. Number four, tell me about a team that you personally helped improve their outcomes. Simple enough. Every coach should have multiple examples where they worked with a team and helped improve their outcomes. Not outputs, outcomes. It's not about doing more work. It's about creating more value based on the work. And number five, tell me about an organization that you have helped move towards business agility. This is the hard one. Not many coaches have done this. Most have only been at a team level, but an agile coach must have experience at senior levels of the organization. It's hard to coach a senior vice president if you've never experienced what a senior vice president must deal with. You might have to look for Agile coaches with the experience of trying and failing. There's a lot of learning and failing, and that might be able to add value to the next organization. But this is the question that will be the low score for most Agile coaches you talk to. So, did it work? How did those five questions turn out? As of last month, the director of recruiting reported Agile coaching failures reduced from 80% to 30%. Since the average turnover of a consultant is 50%, they viewed this as a massive success and their clients are benefiting from it. I believe it is important to protect the role of the Agile coach by being more diligent about who we give this title to. It's okay to give newer coaches time to build up this experience, but I would recommend using the title of team coach or just the standard role of scrum master because we all know the scrum master is a coach for the team, the product owner, and the organization. Bad coaching leads to bad outcomes. And bad outcomes push people, teams, and organizations away from agility. And I think that will lead to bad outcome for many companies if they don't understand how to embrace agility before they become obsolete. So, 
how did we do today? Did we get any value out of this? Did we misrepresent agile coaching in a way you don't agree with? Do you have a suggestion for an interview question to ask an agile coach? Please add them to the comments. We really appreciate the way our FOBO community is open to helping each other out. Next week, we're gonna keep focusing on the roles in agility, the product owner. What does a product owner do? Why are they integral? Why are the product owner roles the perfect stepping stone for a person to practice in order to become an organizational leader in the future? If interested, please join me in the training for 2023. Scrum at Scale Practitioner, Product Owner, and Scrum Master classes are all set up for 2023, and more are on the way. Grab one of the remaining seats before they're gone. There'll be a link in the comments for you to get into a class. Before you go, please like and comment, share this with a friend, share it with an enemy. Together, let's all stay relevant at work. I am Tom Ald, your friendly neighborhood product owner signing off. Have a valuable week. Take care.